This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, May 17th, 2010. I'm your host, Peter Bush, in the Finis Monitor. Today, we'll talk to Liam Tancock. Then later, we'll have our performance of the week. First, let's get to Liam Tancock. He's the world record holder in the 50 long course backstroke. He just turned 25, and right now, Liam Tancock joins us in the Finis Monitor from Loughborough, England. Liam, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. How are you doing? Hi, Peter. Yeah, very good, thank you. Just finished uh, a swim workout, which was pretty good, so um, nice to be talking to you guys. What's a typical workout like for you? Uh, to be honest, uh, there's no such thing as a typical workout for me. Every session's different. We, we rarely do the same set, and it, and it could include anything. At the moment, we're in our... Um, sort of our beginning phase and we were actually doing a lot of cross training um a lot um, mixing up the full work quite a bit so um yeah there's no such thing as a normal session for me or uh it's it's very different every session which is which is great for me it keeps me on my toes and it um keeps me motivated and wants me to continue do you do pretty much all of your main sets in backstroke or obviously you can swim the 100 freestyle pretty darn well do you do a lot of freestyle in practice as well um, yeah, I guess I guess my warm ups are, are quite freestyle and backstroke focused. Um, my main sets, I guess, are predominantly backstroke focused. But you know, everyone has bad days and stuff. If you if you're not if you're not swimming fast on your backstroke, then um, you know, try and find a stroke you're swimming fast on. So um, I could do a bit of medley as well. And um, yeah, so I, I can mix up strokes if I'm if I'm struggling on one stroke, which is you know another string to my bow really. All right, it seems like every time there's a big major meet, the Olympics, the World Championships in 2009, the announcers, at least over here in America, when the 100 back comes up, they say, watch out for that Liam Tancock guy on the first 50, but then he'll you know, kind of disappear towards the end. What are you doing to change that? Uh, training, training hard. I've been doing it for, for a number of years now. Obviously, you know, people have been talking about my 50 and my speed and, and the way I get out there. And... I think I've changed backstroke swimming a bit and, and the way people actually tend to swim their races. But, you know, one day those commentators are going to be turning around and saying, you know, he's got a good 50, but, you know, watch him on that back end too. He's getting stronger. What is the, um, what's the hardest thing about being a, a 50 guy by nature but turning it into, you know, a successful 100 that can be medal contending at the Olympics? Um, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, a lot of people say I'm a 50 backstroker, but I, I really don't see it. Obviously, you know, I've got, I've got the speed, I've got the strength and stuff, but for, for the last four or five years, although the results might not have come, they, they're, they're coming slowly, but um, I've actually been focusing on the 100 because it's an Olympic event. You know, the 50 means a lot to me, but to be honest, the 100 means a lot more. So that's what I focus on in training every day, and, um, you know, that's what I'll be looking for, forward to the, for the future. That 100 freestyle was pretty impressive at your British Nationals. Did you know you had that in you? Um, no, not really. Um, it, the last few years, I've been playing around with a few different events. I, I played with the medley, you know, in 2008 and at the Olympic Games and, and did okay at that. Um, and I thought, to be honest, I, I tried it in 2009, the 100 freestyle um, at, at the World Trials. And, um, and so I'm okay, got in the relay team. And I was like, yeah, freestyle is quite fun. Why not give it a go? And the, the only really reason I tried it is because I had a free day at trials. And I thought, you know, look down the list of events and see what I might be able to swim. And the, the 100 freestyle popped out. And, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm okay at it. But I'm, I'm not really a world beater at the moment. Um, and it's not really my main focus. But it's always nice to get in there and, you know, scare a few guys in the process of, of enjoying, enjoying racing, you know, a different event. Well, if you took it seriously, you could probably scare more than a few guys with that kind of time. You know, do you consider swimming it individually, or is it maybe just a, a thing, hey, I can be um, one of the four guys that could put together a pretty good relay in 2012? Um, no, my, my focus is, is backstroke, and obviously I like to swim different events and, and, you know, changing up my focus within the pool and and both in training and competition. So it's nice to have, as I said, a string to, you know, another string to my bow, but... No, it's, it's really not. It's not the main focus for me. It's it's nice to get in there and compete against different guys. Obviously, I compete against the backstrokers all the time, you know, year in, year out, and you know, it's a, a fantastic group of guys. But you know, it's it's nice to mix it up with, with with some other people as well. But as I say, it's it's not as I see it at the moment a uh, anything I really want to pursue. It's just it's just a fun event. 
Is anyone faster than you underwater? Maybe, maybe. Obviously, there's there are a few fast people out there. Well, there's 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 a lot of fast people out there, uh, not just in backstroke, but across across the disciplines. And um, you know, a lot of people are trying to say who's the fastest, and I guess no one really knows. But it's my focus to keep to keep working on that and try and make me one of those top people in the world, and um, you know, make me one of those people that people are chasing really. All right, so is the big focus this year Commonwealth Games over Europeans? Yeah, I think so. It's going to be my main focus, definitely. I've, obviously, I've got the Europeans in the summer and the Commonwealths are a few months later. But, um, yeah, the, the Commonwealths is, is the one I really want to go for. I'm going to have my, my main taper for and um, it's definitely going to be my main focus. Or I should have asked also, is the main, is the main focus the, uh, the World Cup of football? The World Cup of football? I'm actually <laughs> traveling around Europe doing some racing while that's on, so I'm going to miss a few games. But obviously, I'll be trying to keep informed by the internet and things like that. And uh, everyone talks about how England's going to do, and everyone's got their own opinions. But I think I'm going to have to just wait and see. You know, England's opening game is against America, I believe. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. We should make a little morning swim show wager on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a betting man, but I think it. I think it'll be interesting. I think um, I'll be doing the Mayor Nostrums at the time, and uh, yeah, I'll try and get one of the evenings to to try and. Uh, Try and sit down and watch that. It would be quite nice. And maybe even with some of the Americans as well. Get a bit of friendly fans to go in. Should be nice. Is there any buzz around Britain about the 2012 Olympic Games as it pertains to swimming? Or are they still, hey, let's get past the World Cup and then we'll start thinking about that? I think ever since they announced the, the Olympics in Britain, it's been pretty exciting. Um, I know for me, it, it's, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a main focus. And you know, someone I dreamed about all my life, really, and to actually get the opportunity to um, to have a home Olympics in London in in less than two well in two years' time now, which is you know it's incredible. And every day that passes, the the hype and the excitement gets more and more and more. And to be honest, I really can't wait until say 30 days out from the Olympic Games. It's going to be crazy. Do you know what I mean? We're going to get all the media attention, all the all the publicity, all the excitement, and and the whole nation is going to be behind us. It's 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 a crazy time, and um, you know I, that's what I love. I I love being involved in that sort of thing, and um, hopefully I am. Well, there's no question your country's going to be looking at you as one of the medal contenders. So uh, a lot of pressure to carry. I, I think pressure is something you can put on yourself. You, you you know people say that other people put pressure on you, but at the end of the day, there's there's no one that can affect you apart from yourself, and and that's the way I look at it. I go out there and enjoy it and, and do my best every time I race. Um, sometimes you can't, don't come away with results and sometimes you do and um, you just got to take it on the chin and, and enjoy it. So, yeah, there might be outside pressures, but for me, there definitely won't be any pressures. I'm out there to, to have fun. Liam, we appreciate you coming on the show. Good luck this summer. No worries. Thank you very much. Our May issue of Swimming World magazine brings you complete coverage of the women's and men's NCAA Swimming and Diving Division I Championships. On the cover is the Texas Longhorns men's team, which surged on the third day of competition to win the 10th title for Coach Eddie Reese. You can read John Lone's report about that unforgettable weekend in Columbus, Ohio on page 12. On page 8 is Jason Marsteller's look back at the Florida women's amazing run to their first team title in 28 years, as well as Julia Smith's I Am Double and some big surprises from the meet. On page 17 is our report on Ohio State's continued dominance in collegiate synchronized swimming. The team won their 26th overall title last month. Our swim magazine section features dryland exercises for a better backstroke by J.R. Rosania and a week's worth of workouts from Gator Swim Club Masters. Dan Flack, the head coach of the Baylor School in Tennessee, is the subject of Mike Stott's Q&A this month. Flack talks about his training his high school team to win Swimming World's national high school title and gets in-depth with one of his top swimmers, Spencer Rowe. The junior swimmer section features a look back at Nova of Virginia's amazing run at the NCSA Junior Nationals, a profile of national record setters from the Eagle Swimming Association, and a roundup of the Speedo sectional meets and winter high school meets. Premium subscribers get plenty of added features in the online version of the magazine, one such feature we're proud to offer this month, interviews with some of the top swimmers from the men's NCAA championships. Just click on a link embedded in the article 
to watch an interview like this one from 50 Free Champ, Josh Schneider. Did the big dog say anything to you after the race? Yeah, actually, uh, just feet and coming up, shaking my hand. I was glad Adrian came over across the lanes, shake my hand, because uh, I tried to introduce myself to him on Monday, and uh, I didn't feel the love there, but um, <laughs> just, you know, he was being a good sport, and I uh, appreciated it, you know. If you're not a premium subscriber, just go to swimmingworld.com and click on the subscribe link.